Today, I thought I'd walk you through my process of how I create a multimedia painting with watercolor, collage, and acrylic. And recently I've added an addition of transfer prints. So I decided to create a couple of pieces based on the idea of joy. And first, I'm gonna show you how I found my references. I sought out a couple of photos on Upsplash, which has a tremendous selection of reference photos that you can use. I give the credit to the photographers here and show you how I zoomed in and cut what I'm going to use for these paintings. Anytime I do any kind of portrait painting from a reference, I start with a drawing, of course, and normally I use a very hard pencil. As you may know from school, your traditional 2B pencils, number two, that has to do with the level of hardness or softness of the lead. They tend to go from 9B, which is exceptionally soft, and then up in number 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1B, up to the H's, and then you have the scale goes the other way, to the hardest point. And a hard point is going to come up as a very sharp, soft line, and a very soft lead is going to be really dark and smudgy. So I've always used a very light line in the past. I've always used my Dewart pencils, the set that I've had for ages. But a friend of mine recently sent me a different number nine pencil that I've not tried before. Thank you, Jim. And I'm gonna to try to paint over that and see how that changes my work. So I need to keep that in mind when I'm putting watercolor washes over it. But I like the idea of having a little heavier line shine through. So I first start with putting down some watercolor washes and I'm just gonna build up layers.
Once I'm happy with where I've gotten the paintings with just the watercolor, I will start adding collage elements, primarily coming from magazine cuts, and I use a neutral pH adhesive. Once those layers have properly dry, I can go back in and add some details with acrylic paint. I like to use my palette knife to get some texture, a few different colors, but I'm going very light on these. And I also will use some acrylic markers as well as, after that dries, some colored pencils and oil pastels. It's very simple for me to create transfer prints because I happen to have a laser printer. So a laser printer specifically will work to do this, but not an inkjet printer. So that's a really important point. I designed some text in Illustrator that I wanted to lay onto the tops of these pieces. And another important point is that you need to reverse it. So a mirror image of it that you're going to put down. I use an acrylic gel medium to lay those on and I give them a real good press with a brayer and I let it dry overnight. The next day I will come in and use a damp cloth to gently scrub away the paper and the ink will be left behind. And this is the completion of these pieces. I will trim the paper a little bit, get rid of the notches at the top for the spiral that they came out of, the spiral watercolor pad. There's a whole other series of steps that I go through once I've finished my paintings, which I will leave for another video. And I probably will do it on these same paintings just for continuity, so watch for that. In the meanwhile, I do have these available as prints. The originals are already gone. They were spoken for and they're off to their new homes already. But I do have some very high quality prints available on my website. And I will throw the link below if you are interested. 
the meanwhile, take care, and I hope you will tune in for the continuation of what happens after the artwork is done. <laughs>